Hello. Today is Wednesday the 1st of April, a day when many of us would be normally gathering at St Thomas's for worship in the morning. We're getting into the flow of worship while we're apart, hard though it is, and so we gather today to pray, to think, and to remind ourselves of the God who's with us through all times. So let's be still together. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. As we always do when we gather to worship, we open our hearts to God's presence, knowing that we need his spirit, we need the awareness of his love to worship him as we should. Let's pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And we pray the collect prayer for this week. Gracious Father, you gave up your Son out of love for the world. Lead us to ponder the mysteries of his passion, that we may know eternal peace through the shedding of our Saviour's blood, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The first reading set for the communion service today like the bit from Ezekiel that we heard on Sunday, is from the time of the exile, this time from the prophet Daniel. Although we believe it was written down much later, it tells a story of events back in the time when Israel's people and leaders were captive. The king Nebuchadnezzar had issued a decree that whenever musical instruments played, everyone should bow down and worship a great golden image. And those who remained faithful, including those we hear about, refused. This is what happened. It's from Daniel chapter 3, beginning at verse 14. If you're following it along, a few verses are missed out along the way. Nebuchadnezzar said to them, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods, and you do not worship the golden statue that I have set up? Now if you're ready when you hear the sound of the horn, pipe, lyre, trigon, harp, drum and entire musical ensemble to fall down and worship the statue that I have made, well and good. But if you do not worship, you shall immediately be thrown into a furnace of blazing fire. And who is the God that will deliver you out of my hands? Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego answered the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to present a defence to you in this matter. If our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the furnace of blazing fire and out of your hand, O King, let him deliver us. But if not, be it known to you, O King, that we will not serve your gods, and we will not worship the golden statue that you have set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar was so filled with rage against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego that his face was distorted. He ordered the furnace to be heated up seven times more than was customary, and ordered some of the strongest guards in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and to throw them into the furnace of blazing fire. Then King Nebuchadnezzar was astonished, and rose up quickly. He said to his counsellors, Was it not three men that we threw bound into the fire? They answered the king, True, O king. 
he replied. But I see four men, unbound, walking in the middle of the fire, and they are not hurt. And the fourth has the appearance of a god. Nebuchadnezzar said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego, who has sent his angel and delivered his servants who trusted in him. They disobeyed the king's command and yielded up their bodies, rather than serve and worship any god except their own god. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's keep a moment's silence and reflect upon God's word. Lord, now speak to us, encourage us, and give us your hope. Amen. The opening chapters of the book of Daniel speak in many stories of the life of God's faithful people in exile within a different culture, but not only making the most of it, but contributing finding their role to serve God in places they hadn't expected. Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego, faithful Jews, exiled from their homeland, had become respected and senior figures in the government of Babylon. That's why it was prominent when they refused to worship the statue of pagan gods. That's why they were in trouble in the first place. And the whole sweep of the beginning of Daniel teaches us about remaining faithful in difficult circumstances. And here in particular, these three friends give us an example of courageous faithfulness in extreme danger. When they're given their last chance to worship the statue and refuse, I love their words, they say that our God is able to deliver us from the furnace of blazing fire and out of your hand, O King. But if he doesn't, if our God does not step in and put everything right, be it known to you, O King, that we will not serve your gods, and we will not worship the golden statue that you've set up. Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego live a faith which doesn't depend upon getting from God what we want when we want it. They will trust him and they will stay faithful to him even when they see nothing coming back. That's the example of true faith. It was C.S. Lewis who in that wonderful book um, Screwtip Letters wrote that the devil is never more worried than when God's people pray even though they don't feel that any answer is coming. Because then the prayer that is offered then the life that is lived faithfully is an act of devotion that builds strength and hope and courage. Of course, God did step in and rescue Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. He kept them safe in the blazing, fiery furnace. You get wonderful storytelling or wonderful phrases in Daniel. But there's a detail in the story that is mysterious but intriguing. King Nebuchadnezzar, seeing what's happening, looks into the flames and sees not the three, but four. The only thing the fire seems to have touched is the ropes that bound Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego, now gone. But they and another mysterious figure, who Nebuchadnezzar says is like a god, and then describes as being an angel has been there with them. Now Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego don't mention this figure. Perhaps there was something about their experience there that was too mysterious, too unique to speak of. But Christians ever since have known that perhaps it was an angel that was there with them. 
But since early times, many have believed that this was, in fact, before he was born at Christmas, Jesus. Or rather, God the Son who became Jesus. Already there, beforehand with his servants. But whether an angel or God the Son, God was there supporting, encouraging and protecting even the darkest of places. And he's with us now and will be wherever we go. Amen. Now, as we would do gather for communion, let's affirm our faith in Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who say together, though he was divine, he did not cling to equality with God, but made himself nothing. Taking the form of a slave, he was born in human likeness. He humbled himself and was obedient to death, even the death of the cross. Therefore God has raised him on high, and given him the name above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, and every voice proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. And as we pray, I'll say a few short biddings and then leave space for your own prayers. And we join please in answering, as I say, Lord, Meet us in the silence. We answer, give us strength and hear our prayer. So let's pray. Lord, meet us in the silence. Give us strength and hear our prayer. Father, we pray for your strength to live faithfully in difficult times. Help us selflessly to trust in you and obey you as did your servants Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego so long ago. And be with us through all of these dark times. Lord, meet us in the silence. Give us strength and hear our prayer. We pray, Father, for all who are ill, not only those who are suffering through the COVID virus, but the many others who are ill for other cause. We pray for all seeking to care for those who are vulnerable, for those who are supporting neighbours. We pray for those who are isolated. We pray for your work through the medical teams, especially at New Cross. We pray for those in need. Lord, meet us in the silence. Give us strength and hear our prayer. We pray, Father, for ourselves and for those whom we love, whether they are at home with us or whether we're having to live apart. Hold us close to you, and so to one another. In quiet, we pray for those dearest to us. Lord, meet us in the silence. Give us strength, and hear our prayer. We draw prayers together in the words that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father in heaven, Hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Now may Christ crucified draw you to himself to find in him a sure ground for faith, a firm support for hope, and the assurance of sins forgiven, 
and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. The Lord God Almighty is our Father. He loves us and tenderly cares for us. The Lord Jesus Christ is our Saviour. He has redeemed us and will care for us till the end. The Lord, the Holy Spirit, is among us. To God the Father, God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be praise and glory today and forever. Amen.